Welcome to the Martin Bailey Sometimes video podcast. Today I'm going to talk you through a new product that I've just completed working on and it's basically to overcome a problem that I've had and I know that a number of other people have had. I've, I've had questions on this many times in recent years uh, but basically when you are preparing an image for print in Lightroom if you have if you want to use what I call fine art borders, which is where you have a smaller border at the top than the bottom, and you want to print this to a piece of paper that is larger than the actual print that you want to make. So you see, with this print, if I was going to print on this paper size, there'd be no problem. I, could, I can use Lightroom's uh, borders here. You can see the bottom border. We can set this larger than the top one, and we're away. But if we want to print this, say I wanted to print, uh, I didn't have some 8.5 by 11 inch paper, for example, and I want to print this out on a piece of 13 by 19 inch paper, which I do have, or maybe I'm using roll paper on a large format printer, then you need to be able to apply these, well, cut lines or trim marks to the edges of the print to see them. And Lightroom doesn't allow you to do that without any custom messing around with the images. So what I've done is I've created some scripts that run in Photoshop that do all of that messing around for us with one click. And basically what you have to do is, you know, if you buy these, these are going to be available for $12. It's like a dollar a script. And I'm not going to sell them individually. I'm just going to put them all in one package. This is what you'll see when you download them. Uh, I might add paper sizes later, but you can actually customize these and change and create new paper sizes if you want to, which is another reason why I'm not going to sell them individually, because once you've got one, you can create the rest. I'm just saving you the time in doing that by having them already here. So this is what you'll see, and you copy these to your Photoshop's presets scripts directory like this, and once they're in there, you can, let's uh, if we if we go back to the grid view, what we'll do is we'll open this image in Photoshop. I've actually already got it open uh, because I want to show you a number of them. Once you've got the image open in Photoshop, then all you have to do is go to the file menu scripts and all of your scripts are down here. And you can say if you, you want to create a 13 by 9 inch print, that's all you need to do. It's automatically added the top and the bottom border. This is actually 7% of the, of the height of the image, and this is uh, 13%, so it has to add up to 20. You can customize this in the script, and I'll just show you quickly now where you do that. So all you do is right-click the script and open it. You can open it in any text file, uh, text editor. I'm, I've got the Extend Script Toolkit loaded, and basically, if you want to change the the, the script, all you have to do is you can define new page sizes here in millimeters, the the short edge and the long edge of the paper. I don't call them the the height and the width because obviously that, that flips over when you use a portrait or a, a landscape aspect ratio orientation. Uh, but then the other thing you have to do is just, if these come with 7 by 13 as standard, as default. If you wanted to make the image go a little bit further to, closer to the top with a smaller border, you can reduce this from between 1 and 10. If you go to 10, basically that gives you the, the image will be in the center of the frame. I'm not going to go through that now. You can play with that yourself, but basically that's what you would do. Everything below that in the script, I advise you to leave it alone unless you are comfortable with, with this sort of scripting. Uh, so now we've got this, we would save it as, don't save it as, you know, don't overwrite your original image. If you do that, you'll mess it up. Save it as something like 13 by 19. And I've already got a copy of that, but I'm going to replace that so that I can show you. Before we go back into Lightroom, I'm just going to show you as well that this obviously will work with any aspect. It doesn't have to be a, a portrait or a... Uh, a landscape aspect. If I was to go to a 14 by 17, for example, you'll see that you get slightly wider sides, but that's because the aspect ratio is different. 
the top and the bottom will always be 7% and 14% of the height of a horizontal image. And that just looks more pleasing for me to me as a fine art print. You can, obviously, if you've got some very tall images, you might use this tool not only to create the pages, but to select the right size page. For example, 11 by 17 is a nice long format and would match this print much better than a, a short stubby one like 8 by 10. Um, sh talking short and stubby, here's an image that has actually been uh, re it's been cropped to a, an 8 by 10 aspect ratio. So you can see if we select 8 by 10, that has a, that's a nice pleasing ratio that works well with this image. Wider images, of course, if we, again, I'm going to select 11 by 17 because it's a nice long narrow um, aspect ratio. But if I just turn that off, obviously we can go with anything we want. I'm just showing you how you might use it. You might even go with something short and stubby like a 16 by 20 if that's the, the paper size that you need to print to. And here again, square. Square will be placed on a horizontal page. You, you can flip this around if you change one character in the script, but generally, uh, if you will go with, want to go with square, it will put it, expand, extend the page out horizontally and not vertically. But this is a totally square image. And just another one last example. This is again, this is an arbitrary crop. It's not a specific crop. It's close to eight by 10. Um, but let's just drop this onto say a 12 by 18 inch print. And you see how it's working with all of these different sizes of crops and prints without any problems. So then let's take a look at how you would work with your images. So this is the one that I overwrit earlier. What you need to do, you'll note, you'll see here that the image is not sitting correctly in its cell. That's because this is the old, the old cell that I had. What you need to do, there's a couple of ways you can do this, but in the package that you download is this spreadsheet. This spreadsheet contains all of the sizes of the scripts that the scripts will create, the height of the paper and the width, and then the size in inches. But then it's got the sizes of the borders, if you need that for anything, and then the cell size. And the cell size is the the site, the part, the area of the 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 image, the new image that contains the the photograph itself. And what you can do is you can use that to find these sizes if you want to the for the the borders. Uh, sorry, for the cell to create the cell for it to fit in with the borders. But another thing, I just wanted to show you here. For example, we resized this to 13 by 19, and you can just create presets. Once you've got the, uh, the, the settings all typed in, you can just create a preset so they recall really easily. If you want to do a single page, um, before, and normally you'll print from this view, but if you go to the print package, this will allow you to save and move the image around on a piece of paper. Now, this paper is something that I've created. Here we can see that it's a, I'm, I'm printing on roll paper here. Um, this is 17 by 22 paper, and that's for a 13, this is a roll, 17 inch roll, uh, but I've got this set up for 13 by 19 inch crop. And this is just a whole bunch of, not what I call non-standard page sizes, that I can create on a on my roll printer, my large format printer. Now, that's only going to be useful for some of you. For example, this image here, I've got this. It's an 11 by 17 inch image. You can buy 11 by 17 inch paper in sheets, but you might not always want to stock every possible type of paper. And this is one of the reasons why I've developed this. So I don't buy 17 by uh, 11 by 17 inch sheets, things like that. But here you can see that I've just dropped this into a template that I created for 
uh, 13 by 19 inch sheet. So if you buy paper in 13 by 19 and yet you want an 11 by 17 inch print, you could print onto the sheets like this. And there's a few things to note. You can create it here. You've got add a package. You can create presets up to six presets here so that you can literally type in, uh, save yourself from typing in the sizes that you drop onto the page sizes. Um, but Assuming you've got the page size set up to 13 by 19 or whatever roll paper size or other paper size you need to you need to lay out, then select picture package for a single photo, custom package for multiple photos. We'll get to that in a moment. And then you can either type in the size of the of the page that you want to print out here, or you can set create presets and use them. But because I add a very small it's a, a literally a 0 0.25, a quarter of a millimeter, very, a light gray border, like a stroke line around the outside of the image. Um, because I add that, you have to add half a millimeter to the width and the height. Um, but if you work in inches, you'll see here that I have got 11.02 inches. And the 0 0.02 is literally the quarter of a millimeter. If you just add that, it's really easy to work in inches as well. So you just all you need to do is create some presets or type in the size of the paper in inches and add 0 0.2 for the border. And what the, the reason you need the border is if you look here, we I'm also using this cut guides. So it's going to print these line these two lines here that line up with the edges of the white border. And this is why this is so important that we this is why we have to actually add the white border because without that border the image is only this big and these cut guides that we need to trim the paper are they start here and here and they they basically come off of the image and not off of the the border that we need and so with us having this new white border actually as part of the image we can display the cut guides and they're in the correct place. But the problem is, imagine you were going to then trim this image down along this edge first. Of course, you then automatically lose the horizontal trim guides. So you wouldn't know where to where to line up to trim the top. You'd still have this end, but if you trim that end, this left side off as well, you'd have no idea where the top and the bottom of the image should be. So that's why I add the very faint gray border. I'm calling it the silver lining. And with that, you can trim it off. I add it to the outside of the paper. So if you literally, you lay a steel rule along, get a cutting mat, a big craft cutting mat, lay a steel rule along the edge on the inside of the, on this side of the, the border. And literally with a sharp cutting knife, being very careful not to cut your fingers, you then trim off the edges, but because you've got that, you've got these cut, cut marks here help to the cut lines guides help us to see where the edges of the the image come to. But you do have this this gray line that's on the outside of the image. So cut that away and you'll have a perfectly sized image. And I, I also wanted to go and show you if you imagine that you are printing with 17 inch roll paper and you want to print two images. Um, here I've laid out an 8 by 10 and an 8.5 by 11 photograph. All you need to do is lay these out. You drop the, create the frames. Here we have an 8 by 10 and an 8.5 by 11. So create those cells, drop them onto the frame and then we can literally just grab the images. This is an 8 by 10 and Here's an eight and a half by eleven. Drop them in there, and you can see that it's quite easy to I'll just reduce this as well. You can see that it's quite easy to lay out images of multiple sizes on one piece of paper. And the paper that I've got selected here at the moment, if we go to the page setup, you can see that I've I've created a twelve by seventeen inch. It's a non-standard piece of paper size, but because it's roll paper, I can literally define anything I want, and then the printer will automatically cut that when we've finished. So, not a lot of room for the cut guides, but this is a very efficient way 
of producing multiple images on one piece of roll paper and give yourself the guides. You'll see that the guides don't overwrite each other. You could trim this away from here and this away without any problems. And what I'm going to do is just show you quickly one last example. For example here, 16 by 20. Again, you can do this on 17 inch roll paper by 22 inch that I have set up. Okay, so if we go down here and select this, you'll see that we have the image perfectly aligned in the frame like this. So you can see how it makes it very easy to just lay out your images on pages. The This particular page again, this is a, if we look at the page setup, 17 by 22. So 17 inch roll paper with 22 inch length. It'll literally cut the paper when it gets to 22 inches after printing out the image. The guides are here. Don't forget to turn on cut guides. Uh, but if you even if you don't turn them on or don't have room for them, the silver lining that we add around the image will help you to trim these away. And like I say, you can you can use a steel rule on a craft mat, the rubber craft mats that don't mark, or you can use a rotary cutter. And these trim marks come into their own when you're using a rotary cutter, where you literally it's like a like a guillotine that you put the put the paper in and then roll the the rotary cutter along and it just slices this off for you very cleanly uh, but trimming with a ruler is fine too so what you need to do if you would like to take a bit of a better look at the details i've put a web page together i'm going to be embedding this video in here so it's not there right now and you can find this at mbp.ac slash border scripts one word border scripts and I've put some examples in these will show you the air the places that you need to select to do various things and then if you go to the bottom you can literally just add this to your cart and buy it it's twelve dollars um, a steal really if this is a problem for you if it's not a problem for you you don't need it um, but then, you know, basically add it to your cart, check out with a credit card or PayPal, and the download will start once you've finished your checkout. So thanks very much for listening today, and I hope this is of some use for some of you. I know that I've, I've talked about this, the problem uh, that, that I've overcome here with these scripts to a number of people, and it's, it's something that I'm happy that I'm not going to have to deal with it again. So if you need to print your images on multiple images on roll paper or smaller images on larger sheets that you say, it basically just saves you from having to stock lots of different paper sizes. Um, if that's something that you need to need to deal with, then come along and, and grab these. One last thing that I should mention is, is that I've not had the, I've not got the computers now to test this on windows and all various places. If it should not work on Windows, then I'll, I'll remove that from the website and let you know, make it obvious. I can't see it not, um, but also if you have any problems, I'm just going to put a 30 day money back guarantee on this. So say if you're using an older version of Photoshop, I don't know what the backward compatibility is like. Uh, if you have any problems at all, try the scripts within 30 days. And if you have any problems, I'll just refund your money. So there's no risk. It'll only take a few minutes to check to see if this is working for you. And let me know if it does work, because I'll then update the website so that other people can buy in confidence. Uh, but yeah, thank you very much for listening. And I hope this is useful for you. And I will see you online again. Remember that you can find me on Google Plus and Twitter, etc., and links to everything that I'm up to are at martinbaileyphotography.com. So do drop by and take a look. I'll be back next week with another episode. But in the meantime, you take care and have a great week, whatever you're doing. Bye-bye.